In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the items under the Options menu. Click on IDE to bring up the IDE options. In the General section are various editor options. Click on the Help button to bring up documentation about each option if you ever want more details. On the right side are the options for file change history. This will perform a backup every time you save a file with changes made to it. You can change the frequency for how often it will perform a backup. At the bottom of the general section is an area called tabs. If use tab is selected, an actual tab character will be inserted into the file when the tab key on the keyboard is pressed. Otherwise, spaces will be inserted into the file instead. The tab size field determines how many spaces will be inserted if use tab is not selected. The display section has options for determining how different parts of the IDE should be displayed. You can change the font style inside the editor from here. The menu style can be changed to the classic bar if you prefer smaller buttons at the top of the IDE. The color scheme for the IDE can be silver, blue, or black. To change the settings back to default, click on the defaults button and then apply. The color section lets you change the color inside the editor window for C syntax highlighting. The twilight setting will change the editor to have a black background with white text. The keyboard section is where you can add and remove keyboard shortcuts. To add a shortcut, click on the area in the left side that you want the shortcut to go to. Next, click on the text box under hotkeys in the right side. Now, press down on the keyboard the shortcut keys that you want to use. They will appear in the text area. Click on the Add button to create the shortcut. To delete the shortcut, select the shortcut in the right side text area and click on the Remove button. The Toolbar section is where you can customize the user toolbar, which can be found in the top menu of the IDE. To add a button to the user toolbar, select an action on the left side and click on the top arrow button to add it to the right side. To add a separating line between buttons, click on the middle arrow button. To remove a button, select the action on the right side and then click on the bottom X button. To change the order of a button, select the action on the right side and then click on the up or down arrow. To make these selections the default configuration setting, click on the default button. Notice that the items in the user toolbar were updated. The tool section lets you configure the usage of external tools and programs inside the IDE. If a tool is unchecked, it will be hidden from the IDE. This will let you disable a tool without removing it from the configuration. The usage column tells you where you can find the tool inside the IDE. The command column shows the program that will be executed, along with any parameters that will be passed to the executable. Under the table, there are some escape characters that can be used to pass file names to the executable. To remove a tool, click on the tool name and then click the delete button. To add a tool, click on the add button. The reset button will change the settings back to the default. The path section shows the location of important directories. Some of these locations can be changed using the browse button. The registry install location is where the Windows registry thinks the compiler is located. If this is incorrect, click on the sync button to have it match the install location. The dialog section is where you can set if a dialog box should pop up during an action. If an item is unchecked, then the dialog box will not appear. The association section is where you can configure the Microsoft Windows file associations for file formats that are commonly used by the IDE. The first column is the file name extension. Click on the values in the other two columns to change the file association for just the user or for the whole system. Click on Project to bring up the project options. 
In the general section are various project options. The project device can be set here. If multiple compilation units is checked, then you will be able to add another source file from here to the project that will get compiled when the compile button is pressed. The remove button will remove a source file. If you want the project to use a specific compiler version, then check the box and enter the compiler version number. The include file section is where you can set the search path for pound include. Multiple directories can be added to the search path. If there are multiple files with the same name in the include directories, the compiler will use the file that is highest on the list. Pressing the default button means that the default search path will be used. The global define section is where you can add pound defines to each source file compilation unit during compile time. This is useful for adding dynamic configuration options without modifying the code. In order to enable this feature, check the enabled checkbox. The identifier column is the name of the pound define, and the definition column is the value. Definitions can be saved to a file using the save button or loaded using the load button. The clear button will remove all entries from the table. The output file section is where you can configure which output files are generated by the IDE. The debug file contains information for the debugger. Most debuggers use the cough file format. The format for the list file can be selected here. List files end in .lst and display the assembly generated for each line of C. Compile window up is where you can select how long you want the pop-up window to stay open after a compile. If call tree file is checked, then a .tre file will be generated, which shows how the function calls are connected to each other. If statistics file is checked, then a .sta file will be generated, which contains statistics about the program, such as complexity and memory usage. If scratch files is checked, then the scratch files generated by the compiler will not be deleted after a compile. When sending a project to CCS tech support, it is often useful to have this selected. Object file is where you can select what type of file the final image file will be that gets generated after a compile. This is the file that is used by the programmer to program the microcontroller. Most programmers use an 8-bit hex file. Error file is where you can configure the .error file and select how error messages are displayed. To display all the warnings and errors, multi-lines should be selected and the checkboxes for show all errors and show warnings should be checked. The original and standard options will only display the first error found. There is an option to put output files in separate directory. The default button will set the options back to the default settings. The checkbox at the bottom will let you change the default settings. Click on printer to bring up the printer options. Updates is where you can configure the software update utility. All of the software packages will be kept up to date unless you check customize software to update. You can then select the software that you want kept up to date. Click on the configuration button. At the bottom is where it will let you save a copy of each installer into the specified archive location. This is useful if the user ever needs to install a specific version of the software later. Check for updates is where you can change the rate at which available updates are checked. Below that is where you can set what the software will do when updates are found. The import CRG button will ask you for the location of the CCS registration file that you wish to load. Click on next to check if there is a newer version of the compiler available.
Visit ccsinfo.com for more information about the easy-to-use CCSC compiler IDE and for purchasing options.